Hello everyone, Dr. Kofi here and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Tutor Med, where everything medicine is simplified. In our last video, we looked at the ECG criteria for ST elevation myocardial infarction. In this video, we will focus on the ECG criteria for non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome, which is made up of unstable angina and NSTEMI. I suggest you watch the video on ECG criteria of STEMI before watching this. You will find the link to that video in the video description below. Alright, let's zoom into today's tutorials quickly. So let's look at the ECG changes that commonly occur in non-ST elevation ACS. The first is ST segment depression. And then you may see ischemic T waves. One manifestation is T wave inversion. And most importantly, these inverted T waves have symmetrical halves, meaning if we drew a line through it, we will have two equal halves. The normal T wave morphology is supposed to follow the QRS direction and has a symmetrical halves. And so for an ischemic T wave, the T wave will be discordant with the QRS direction. That is why it is inverted. And in addition, the halves will be symmetrical. Sometimes the T waves, instead of being inverted, will just be flat, but this is not commonly seen. Now I want to reiterate this that if we have ST segment depression and we are certain it is from ischemia. I'm saying this because we can have non-ischemic causes of ST segment depression. So ischemic ST segment depression means that there is subendocardial ischemia of that wall. For example, ST segment depression in this V2, V3, V4 shows that the myocardium of the anterior wall closer to the endocardium is in trouble. Ischemic ST segment elevation means there is full thickness or transmural ischemia of that wall. I want to point out here that ischemia usually affects repolarization. That is why the ST segment and the T waves are most commonly affected. And remember that it is rare to find Q waves in non-ST segment elevation acute coronary syndrome. Now let's look at the ECG criteria for these changes. Fortunately, they are not as complex as those of STEMI. And so for ST depression, the rule says there should be a new horizontal or downward sloping ST segment depression of at least 0.5 mm or half of a small box below the baseline in at least two contiguous days. And here is the reason I suggested you watched the session on STEMI before watching this video because the concept of contiguous lease has been thoroughly treated there. Now you have ST segment depression with or without or plus or minus T wave inversion and the rule for the T wave inversion says you should have an inverted T wave of at least one millimeter below the baseline in at least two contiguous leaves and the preceding QRS complex should have a prominent R wave, meaning the R to S ratio should be more than one. This criteria presupposes that the main indicator of an ongoing subendocardial ischemia is ST segment depression. In fact, an inverted symmetric T wave suggests that the ischemia has already occurred, but not acute. Alright guys, please pause here, like and share our video and subscribe to our channel if you have not done that yet. And so on this slide, let's look at one hypothetical ECG demonstration. Now this is the normal ECG tracing and notice that the T wave is concordant with the net direction of the QRS complex. The QRS complex is in the positive direction and 
then the T wave is also in the positive direction. And so that is the normal direction of the T wave. It should follow the QRS complex. And although this online diagram does not depict the additional feature, the normal T wave should be asymmetrical in its contour. And this is the ST depression ECG tracing. Notice how the segment is 2 mm below the baseline with even a concordant T wave, meaning you don't need an inverted T wave to diagnose subendocardial ischemia. And so the internationally accepted criteria says ST depression with or without a T wave inversion. Again, let's look at this hypothetical ECG tracing which demonstrates T wave inversions hypothetically. Notice how the T wave is symmetrical, that is, if we draw a line through it, it will be divided into two equal halves. And notice that the preceding QRS complex has a predominant R wave. This criteria does not just focus on the inverted T waves, but then the preceding QRS complex should have a predominant R wave. Now, if or assuming this tracing were found in leads 2, 3 and AVF, which are the inferior leads. How do you think this T wave would be in the high lateral leads or the lead 1 and AVL? They will be what? Upright. So, meaning reciprocal leads will show upright leads when the leads they are facing shows inverted T waves. Okay. And so cherished viewers of the Tutor Med community, our take home summary. Please remember that the ST segment depression remains the predominant indicator of an ongoing or acute ischemia in non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. And that there may be associated inverted symmetrical T waves, but on their own, they do not suggest an ongoing or an acute ischemia, although they may suggest that the ischemia has occurred. And note that the ischemic inverted T wave is a symmetrical T wave, 